And now I was just telling uh, our listeners and our viewers here about the uh, new Saudi investors. Uh, I did try and pronounce their names. I think I did an okay job. Abdul Rahman Al Namar and Mohammed Al Rawati. Now, Shane, unfortunately, there are two people you're not going to be working with. Just give us the background to uh, why you're not, why you're no longer the Galway manager. Yeah, look, we fin- finished up with the club there on on Monday, Jamie. So, uh, look, I leave the pronunciation to the name to yourself, but. Uh, Probably is a, an exciting enough time for, for Galway at the moment and disappointed not to be involved in, in what's going to happen between now and the end of the season, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, the club released a statement to say that Galway United can confirm that first-team manager Shane Keegan has left the club in mutual consent. We'd like to thank Shane for his contribution during his time at the club and wish him every success in the future. The club will look to appoint a new manager as soon as possible and will be making no further comment at this time. We asked our club spokesperson to talk to us about that and also about the, the vote involving the uh, Saudis. We uh, got an email back to say that that wasn't going to be possible, Shane, but we are going to speak to you and we appreciate you taking the time only a couple of days after losing your job. You mentioned your quite disappointed and uh, clubs always use this term mutual consent but that's not always the case and I suppose results this season you mentioned that the club had set a target of a points total at, at this point of the season and you hadn't met that so maybe the club decided they wanted someone else in charge Yeah look I suppose that's you know the mutual consent phrase I think everybody knows what it means without, without going into it in too much detail but at the same time um, yeah look I, I suppose from, from the bare fact point of view it's hard for me to have too much of a gripe we would have uh, said top three should certainly be achievable by the mid-season break we're not in the top three um, so from that point and current form it hasn't been good enough so from that point that's obviously what they've based the decision on look from my side of things obviously we're five points off second place I think it's very very easily redeemable um, we're also two weeks off a transfer window where you can make the kind of changes that you'd like to make I think if I was left there, I'd, I'd be very confident in my own abilities to turn it around and make sure that we, we did make the playoffs and, and ideally go on and win it. But look, it's not to be, I can understand why they made the decision that they made and it's, uh, it's likely to become an attractive position for somebody over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, because I was just going to say there, I'm sure you would have fancied spending some of that Saudi money when the transfer window did open. Six in the league table, 12 points off UCD at the top, but only three points off fourth. And as you said, only five off second, with uh, 10 games left to go after the break. So I said at the very start, this race for the top and also the top four would have gone all the way to the wire. And I'm sure you feel that you could have been the man to help Galway get back up at the, at the first attempt, especially with the window coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Look, I suppose to be perfectly honest, if it was... Uh if it was going to be myself and the current group of players for the rest of the season, I can see how they might have thought that it would be a, a struggle for me to get what was needed out of them. But you would have, you know, you're as a manager, you're always kind of tinkering around in the background and seeing what would happen when you're coming up to a window. And there were there were three or four players there that uh, I think were, were possibly gettable who um, would really appeal to me and I think might have, might have solved the deficits that we had within the squad. And... Yeah, look, you have to back yourself, Jamie, don't you? I, I would. I'd be 100% confident that uh, I could have made the changes that the squad needed and, and, and could have made sure that we went up. But, look, it's going to be somebody else's job. And, you know, if I'm entirely honest, I think I think that whoever does come in probably will see the same deficits as, as I would have identified myself. I think they probably will bring in the players that the squad needs. And I do think Galway will end up going up. Yeah, interesting last five games as well. No wins in those matches. Defeats against promotion rivals Drada, Longford and Finn Harps. It draws against Cove and Wexford. And all those games, Shane, came after you'd beaten UCD a couple of weeks before. And I think that, that reduced the gap to the top to one point and, and things were looking really, really interesting. Can you put your finger on why in the last five games no wins came? No, not really. I suppose you can cling to the usual excuse of, of, of injuries. We certainly, um, you know, we certainly weren't helped by them. I mean, we had eight players out on Friday night against Wexford um, and a, a, a sub bench that was exclusively under-19 players. That didn't help. Um, I think a good few of those should be back after the break as well, which will be a help to the club. Um, yeah, look, we were stuck in a situation, Jeremy, where we were... We were dominating possession and creating more goal scoring chances than the opposition and that, but for whatever reason, we just weren't able to uh, take advantage of, 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 of situations like that. We weren't able to turn the performances into points, and uh, it was extremely frustrating. And I suppose the answer to the question is if I knew exactly why it wasn't clicking, I would have fixed it. I was struggling to find out what the answer was. I do, I do think the squad probably needs a bit of freshen up, sir. Now, Shane, it's always an interesting time for a League of Ireland manager who puts his heart and soul into being a football manager and has impacts on family life and personal life away from things as well. And we've been chatting for maybe 10 minutes and you've mentioned we a number of times because you've just very recently finished the job. How have the last couple of days been and what do you plan to do to fill your time from uh, being a football manager full time to now, unfortunately, not being one at the moment? Yeah, well, that's, that's it, I suppose. To be honest with you, the immediate... <laughs> The immediate concern is is uh, I've, I've been doing a master's there through UCD and I've been using the 
football as a, an excuse not to dig in to get me teeth is finally done and dusted. So that's that's the first uh, that's the first port of calls to spend the next few weeks getting that out of the way. After that, um, look, I'd be lying if I said obviously enough that I didn't want to stay involved in in football. Um, in what capacity? I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Um, football management is. Probably a bit of an addiction, really, to be honest with you. If you weighed up all the pros and cons of it and the job, the lack of job security and the fact that a result on a Friday night probably dictates your humour for the next seven days and stuff like that, it's probably not the uh, it's probably not the greatest industry to be involved in for your mental health or your finan- your financial uh, reasons either. But at the same time, you do, you do, you want to get back into it and you want to give it another crack and, and all of that kind of thing. But I need to weigh that up with 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 family and, 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 you know, with what works for, for my wife and what works for our, our small fella and all of that kind of thing. Um, I think, to be honest with you, it could certainly make a strong argument that I was more of a success as Galway manager off the field than I was on the field. And, and the business side of, of football does appeal to me. Um, my own background before going into, into full-time football management would have been very much of a business um, orientation. So the, the business side of football definitely appeals to me, I wouldn't mind looking to see what's out there. I think I think Shelburne have made a fantastic appointment with Dave O'Connor and that kind of a role is is something that I'd have to say that you'd, you'd, you'd be interested in looking at. And then there's the player development side of things, you know, at underage level and that, um, you know, working with working with the likes of Sean Guire for four or five years when he was a teenager, working with Mikey Drennan, who I think you were talking to today for four or five years when he was a teenager, seeing Sean Maguire coming on and the Aviva to make his, his, his international debut. And just, just working with young players and helping fulfil their potential. I have a real real kind of love for that as well. So, you know, I think I think I know I want to stay involved in, in, in sport or, or, or in football. Um, just in what capacity I need to, to wrap my head around over the next couple of weeks. Interesting stuff. Shane Keegan, very finally, speaking of finances and money, who are these Saudis coming into Galway, do you know? <laughs> um, no, look, I think I'm about as, as, as clued in as the rest of you are. Um, it does, it, look, I, I think it is, from, from what I can make out, it does represent a fantastic opportunity for the club. So it does, um, challenge to them is to, to try and embrace the, the new investors and embrace the money that the new investors might bring while, while also not losing what makes Galway United Galway United. And it has been a, a fantastic club to, to manage over the last year and a half. But, uh, Look, they're, they're certainly making all the right noises and I think the, the potential for the club to, to, to still immediately go up, to be honest, and then to make a real, real crack at, at, at Premier Division is, is there and um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the club over the next few years, that's for sure. Shane Keegan, very finally, we've spoken about the Saudi money into Galway. We understand they're going to get some players in in the window. You're now our uh, League of Ireland pundit here on Off the Ball for the rest of the season in the First Division. No better place, man. UCD currently top. They're now seven ahead of Drogheda and Shells after wins at the weekend just gone. UCD on 38, Drogheda and Shells on 31. Longford 29, Harps 28, your old club Galway 26. Cabin Teeley are only seven off fort and Cove only eight off fort, so they're not totally out of it either. Fascinating race. What's your assessment of, of how it'll go? Of course, there's only 10 games left now as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think, I can't see UCD being caught, Jay, to be honest with you. Um, I know there's a lot of, of, of Georgie Kelly talk going around and whether it'll happen for the rest of the season, but to be honest with you, I, I think they have two or three players even more important than Georgie Kelly. I, I think Gary O'Neill and Darrell O'Connor are the two best players in the division. I think once they hold on to two of those, um, I think that's equally, if not more important, than holding on to Georgie. I think I think Collie's doing an unbelievable job there. It's, I was talking about it the other day, and it's, it's he's almost doing. It's almost like Zidane at, at, at Real Madrid. Nobody's talking about him, and he's getting you know he gets very little credit or anything. But he just he doesn't overburden them with tactics. He just lets them off to, to do the business on match night and, and gets them prepared and gets them uh, clearly man managing them well. And I, I can't see them being caught in terms of first. Which two teams are going to miss out in the playoffs? Unbelievably tough to call. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I do think it depends on who Galway bring in, but I do think Galway will very, very much be, be in the picture. Um, Harps, Ollie, I'm sure, will tell you he's the one going to struggle the most <laughs> to, make, to make the playoffs. But um, yeah, it's going to be very, 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 very tight, that's for sure. Yeah, with Shells, Drogheda, Longford, Harps, Galway, Cabo and Co picking up some points as well. It's uh, really interesting to see. But only 10 games left as well. If a team can put a couple of wins together, uh, it'll really propel them up to those. And of course, second will automatically be in the first division playoff against third and fourth who will play each other. So it's a long process to go through, but they won't care once they can try and get into the top four. Shane, final question. Whoever does get up will have a a huge task to stay up next year. And uh, the other question is the playoff, wherever that might be, they'll play either Bray, Limerick, Bowes or possibly Sligo over two legs. Can you see whichever first division team that is 
having a chance to get up because you of course experienced it the other way around when you were the Wexford manager in the Premier League and you were knocked out by Drogheda you had won in the home leg and you were beaten in the away leg at that time when you had just joined Galway and uh, Wexford were in the end relegated as the Premier team so it has happened Limerick had it against Finn Harps uh, reasonably enough as well so it has happened but it will be tough for the first vision team in the playoff won't it? Yeah, I suppose it very much depends on, on who it's going to be. Look, everybody's fairly aware of, of, of Limerick's financial situation. And again, we kind of all just have to sit and wait and see how badly they get affected in the window. And, you know, if they lose a huge amount of players, they could end up finishing last yet. It could be Bray or the team in the playoffs. Um, at the moment, you'd be you'd be looking and you'd say, the likelihood is that Limerick are the team in the, in the playoffs. And uh, you'd certainly be looking at things and you'd be saying that, that I don't think any of the... I don't think any of the, the, the first division sides would be looking at Limerick as, as a team that aren't beatable. I think they'd certainly fancy their chances. That's sure. I think Sligo have enough. Um, obviously, with Mikey gone in there and potentially more arrivals yet, I think they will pull away. I think it will be the bottom two that will be battling for it. Um, if if I was still Galway manager and if Galway ended up in the playoff against the Premier side, I'd probably stick my neck out and say I'd rather play Limerick than Bray, to be honest. Shane Keegan, as always, thanks for meeting with we'll Speedy again between now and the end of the season. Thanks, Shane. Sure, Jay.